Welcome back to the Twins and Things channel. Today I am joined by the elder of the Tate brothers, Andrew Tate. Watch with me as we dissect, break down, and overall analyze what he has to say to Pierce Morgan. I'm excited for this one. Haven't, haven't watched some Andrew content in a minute. So uh, let's get to it. Andrew, it's been uh, well nearly a year since we last sat down together. Very different time. It was in my London studio. And eight days after that, you got arrested. What's the year been like for you? It's certainly been an interesting one. I've been constrained this entire year. I spent 93 days in a Romanian dungeon, five months locked in my house, and now I'm restrained within the country of Romania. So it's certainly been a turbulent time. The moment you got arrested, it was all pretty dramatic. The video came out, the world saw it. A lot of people smashing into your, your home. Did you have any inkling, warning that something like this may happen? I knew it. I kept saying before I was arrested on every single podcast I did, I said, you get three lives in the world. The first life, they're going to cancel you. They're going to slander you. They're going to delete your access to social media so you can't defend yourself. The second life, they're going to try and put you in jail for no reason. And if you continue to speak against the power, they're going to assassinate you. I knew I was on my second life. I kept saying it. I knew it was coming. I didn't know the bullshit reason they'd use, but I found out once I was in a cell. When you were arrested, you, you didn't actually, you don't speak any Romanian at Zero. All. And they didn't speak English to you. Correct. So you, you were taken to a cell. You had no idea what they were alleging you'd done. I was arrested on the 27th of December. So because of Christmas and New Year's and other problems, they couldn't tr even translate my paperwork for two weeks. So for the first two weeks I was in a prison cell, I had no idea why. I was given papers in Romanian. I could read human trafficking, I understood. But I was like, human trafficking who, when, what? None of this makes sense. I waited two entire weeks inside of my cell before I was given an English translation and then I realized exactly how ridiculous the whole case was. Just to clarify, I am accused of helping my friends get big on TikTok. That is what I'm accused of. I told some girls I know how to post on TikTok to become viral when I was at the time the most viral person on the planet. And they are saying I'm a human trafficker for that reason. It is insane. Well, we'll come to what you've been accused of. It's more serious than the way you've categorized it, but we'll come to that. There is a lot of speculation that the reason the Romanian authorities knew that you were back, because you were en route, I believe, to Dubai for a New Year's Eve party, is that you were interacting with Greta Thunberg on social media and you had a pizza in front of you which came from a well-known Romanian pizza uh, store. Is there any truth to that? I don't think so. I think that they know where I was. A lot of people knew where I was. And uh, they had instructions from higher up to teach me a lesson. I was on my second life, and that's exactly what I'm going through right now. There's an irony to your situation because you always said the reason you came to Romania was precisely because you thought you could avoid being in this situation. Well, I loved Romania, and it's a strong Christian nation with strong traditional values. I want a life where I'm left alone by government. I don't believe in big government. I'm trying to avoid that. It felt like Romania was a place which was very safe societally, and the government was not too interested or involved in people's lives but things change. Also, your freedom and your ability to speak the truth is heavily correlated to your insignificance. When you become large and people start listening to what you say, you soon realize you no longer have freedom of speech, and it doesn't matter where you are on the planet, if they decide you must be assassinated, you will be assassinated. You in jail, what was that like? All right, time to quickly pause. Very interesting on how Pierce Morgan approaches Andrew versus Tristan very interesting in his approach as because with the Tristan video we saw there was a lot of talking and over talking um a little bit of steamrolling and you could go far as to say bullying not really but like in the context of how I'm framing this that's kind of how that's kind of the energy that Pierce was giving Tristan with Andrew, and it may be because Andrew has interviewed with him before, it might be a report thing, it might be, um, or it could be a report thing, or that this is the older brother, you know, or uh, Andrew's aura, it could be something like that. But it's just very interesting, the two types of conversations we're seeing having with the two brothers, but let's continue. Romanian jail is not English jail. I mean, describe it, what was the cell like? I have to be careful what I say because I don't want to insult the Romanian justice system, which I'm still beholden to. However, it's exactly as bad as people would expect it to be. Luckily, it was in the winter, so the cockroaches were not too bad. 
it was also during Ramadan, so I didn't have to eat so much, which was helpful because of the situation. I think the most stressful thing about it is I had no idea how long I was going to be in there for. I was dragged from my house. I was given papers in Romanian. I didn't know why I was there. I found out why I was there, and it was garbage. I couldn't seem to get out. It, I could have been held for years. It's very stressful. And uh, the best thing you can do is turn to God and, and train as hard as possible. I did thousands of push-ups a day every Were single day. Were you in day. solitary this, in this period, three months? I, no, I wasn't in solitary the entire month, the entire time. Sometimes I was by myself. Sometimes I was with other guys. And sometimes I was with my brother. So When you were on your own, were they keeping you in there for 24 hours a day? Were you allowed out? No, I wasn't allowed out. There was no yard time. It was 24 hours a day locked in a single room, probably three or four steps large, and you do nothing but stare at the wall. And you. Think How many it, days did you do that for on your own? 11, 12. I mean, that's a pretty grim scenario for, for anyone. Life's grim. For you, always being Mr. Confident, you said, interestingly, that you wouldn't categorize what you were feeling as depression because you don't believe in the concept of depression. You and I have argued about that before. But it sounds to me from what I've seen you say when you've talked about this, that that was pretty close to depression, what you were feeling. Life's grim. And if you want to be a superhero, you have to understand in every single superhero movie, he is losing for 80% of the movie. He's going to suffer for the majority of the movie before he wins at the end. I've always wanted an exceptional life, Pierce, and I'm not a coward. And I knew that by telling the truth about certain issues, I was going to pay the price for it. So I won't say that I deserve to be in jail, but I certainly put myself in there by telling the truth to the populace and telling the truth and living. But when you're on your own in that cell, what were you thinking? It's a long time to self-reflect, right? It certainly is. And I think my number one concern when I was in jail, despite the fact that my situation was dire, were my concerns as a man and all the people I have to take care of and my children and my family and the people I pay for and all the people who work for me. And truthfully, I wasn't worried about myself. I was worried about everybody else. And I think that's the true masculine frame. Did you get emotional? Did you shed tears in yourself? I'm an emotional man. I think, I think men are hyper emotional. We just have to control it. I was extremely busy inside of my jail cell. I had lots of push-ups to do. I was very concerned about the people on the outside. I was trying my best to get out. It's difficult for me to answer the question because it was an interesting frame of mind. I knew that God was watching and I had to perform. It's very difficult for me to go through life saying, I'm the top G, I'm this, I'm that, and speak about mental resilience and mental toughness. And then the second I'm thrown inside of a solitary confinement cell, cower out. I'm not that person. There's, what some other, there's some other people who talk about mental toughness and want to mm. give advice, and when bad things happen to them, they end up addicted to prescription drugs. I'm not a coward and I'm not a liar. No, but, but it would be perfectly natural to be emotional in that scenario, and there's no shame in admitting that. I was emotional. I missed people. Mm. I missed them, and I knew they missed me. So I felt a long, I felt a strong sense of missing. But you cried. There were tears that ran down my face, but I did not cry. I mean, that's crying. I would. <laughs> you can't make this up, yo. That's the answer that any fucking man would give, and it's hilarious. <laughs> there were tears that ran down my face, but I did not cry. Shout out to Andrew, man. Glad he's doing okay. I disagree. Because you, you're worried about admitting that. You think you're sounding Absolutely weak. not. That's a perfectly fine scenario to cry in, but I think the act of crying is an act of desperation. To sit and to cry is an act in and of itself. To do push-ups thinking of your children with tears running down your face, but you're concerned with finishing as many push-ups as possible within that day, I do not consider that crying. I consider that tears running down my face. When you found out what they were alleging you'd done, sexual assault, exploitation, and so on, what did you feel about that? What was I, your first reaction? My first reaction was, ah, the standard playbook. The standard playbook for anybody who speaks up against power is sexual exploitation. Isn't that the normal one they go to? Can't we name like 10 or 15 people right now they hit them with this exact same garbage? Name a full grown man who's 36 or 37 years old who's not had sexual relations with a woman at some point in the past. And the way the matrix works is they lie by omission, right? They just hit Russell Brand with it. I think they hit P. Diddy with it this morning. Julian Assange just got hit with it. He's still in his cell. But lots of people get hit with these allegations and it turns out to be true. A lot of people get hit with them and they turn out to be false. So. Yeah, but you're sort of trying to make out all the people you just named are innocent. You don't know that. Of course I don't know that. But a lot of people get hit and it turns why out would to you be false. Why would you assume they're innocent? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the way the Matrix operates is it choose something which is heinous. If they accused me of drug dealing, nobody would care. They choose something which is heinous, so the process itself is a punishment. So they damage your reputation throughout the process, regardless of whether it's successful or not. Then what they do is they lie by omission. 
they throw you in a cell and they contact everyone you've ever interacted with. 2,000 people I know were called and they were looking for one person to say they're a victim. By the way, they failed. They did not even find one. But if they did, they would then say, Andrew Tate's victim, he's a sexual assaulter. And they would remove the testimony of the 1,999 people who said, I'm a very nice man. Lie by omission. And then they put together this entire package, used the mainstream media to convince the world that you deserve to be in jail. And that is how the Matrix operates. I mean, to be clear, I don't know if you're guilty or not. I do. You're perfectly entitled to say that. And you know, right? Of course I know. But I don't know. And I will await any trial that comes uh, to see what comes out in the trial and see what happens, right? So I'm not going to prejudge the trial. I'm not going to judge you and say, I think you're guilty. I don't know, yeah. right? We are where we are. You've been charged with serious crimes and it's likely you'll face a trial and we'll see how that all plays out, obviously. Going back to jail, how were you treated by other people? Everybody in jail was extremely apologetic to me. All of the staff, the police officers, everyone who worked in the jail, the person who served me my meal, everybody was very sorry for what happened to me. They made it very clear they knew it was garbage and they were apologetic. That was the only vibe I could give you. They were kind of like, listen, you got too big. I'm sorry, but this is how things work. And sorry, here's your meal. Nobody had any real problem with me. None of the prisoners had a problem with me. Did and you get into any fights? There was a, a, a couple scenarios where violence could have occurred, but I think once people realize that violence is a certainty and that you do not operate under a fearful realm, they often aren't so interested. So people threatened you? I wouldn't say they threatened me, but they would have liked to have got the opportunity to threaten me. And what happened? And they realized that would have been a bad decision. And all in all... Well, what, did you, what did you say to them? Because you don't speak Romanian, so... I didn't, you're right. I actually used a quote from Street Fighter. I said, uh, I quoted Dalson, and I said, they do not understand the secrets of yoga fire, because I knew they had no idea what I was talking about. It was near the washing machines, and they looked at me like I was completely crazy, and they walked away. There's more than one person. Correct. And they made, they made it clear what? That they wanted to... I have to be careful what I say, because I'm still beholden to the Romanian judicial system. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's just an incident in jail. That's Correct. That's to do with the system. Incident, an incident report was written, and it's better I don't mention it. But there was a direct threat to... I've had threats, yeah, and I have threats every single day of my life, and I think jail is a hyper-pressurized version of reality, and you need to have an extremely strong mind so you don't attack yourself, and an extremely strong body so others don't attack you. And I understood that there was a threat of violence at all times, and I just decided to go through life extremely respectfully, but make it clear if that's a decision somebody else wants to make that I'm prepared to partake. One of the things I would think about, other than my family, immediate family, but one particular member of my family, if I found myself in jail, would be my mother and what she would be feeling and what she'd be thinking. She's been incredibly supportive to me. I know yours has to you. Did you think about your mother? I was extremely concerned for her. I was concerned because the media establishment were hounding her. She was obviously very worried, but she knew she wrote, raised strong sons. But we're her number one protectors, and I was concerned for her. I, I wasn't concerned for myself in jail. I didn't even suffer in jail as, mo as much as I did when I got out. I didn't have nightmares in jail. I had nightmares once I left jail. I was in the middle of a battle. I don't think you get PTSD while you're fighting. You get it afterwards. I was in the middle of a battle trying to make sure that everybody I love and care about is taken care of and trying to make sure that bills are paid. Please understand, the day I was arrested, which is a year ago, every single bank account that I have was frozen. All of my assets were taken. I haven't had a, a dollar of money since January. You had 10 cars January. taken, I think. 15. 15 cars and, some, and how many properties? 15 cars, six properties, 20 diamond watches, gold bars, cash, land, Every single bank account, millions and millions and what millions of dollars. What was the total value of everything they seized? 16, 17 million pounds. Yeah. And they took all of it. And I still don't have access to any of these things. I mean, as we're doing this interview, you're expecting to hear sometime today as to whether you may get those possessions back. Is it, is it all or nothing? Do you get it all back or nothing? Correct. As we sit here, the judge is deciding whether I get all of my items returned or I get none of them returned. And truthfully, under the law, I should have never had them taken in the first place. So we're going to see what the judge decides. And I have to put my faith within the Romanian judicial system. I have no other choice. I'm not a coward. I'm not going to run. But let's not talk about the Romanian judicial system. Let's talk about the judicial systems of the world. I've recently seen some very scary decisions in America, in England, in these Western democratic nations. You see people doing 20 years for attending peaceful protests. So you start to sit and wonder when you're in these situations. What is a trial? What is a judge? What is this? These are just people in which a room. Peace, which peaceful process are you talking about? There's been a few. And well, I who, think who's got 20 years for attending a 
peaceful protest. I, I don't want to say names. I saw it somewhere on Twitter. Somebody attended, I think it was uh, a protest, a pro-Trump protest, and they ended up getting 20 years. Well, if you're talking about the January 6th riots, they were riots where people died. Well, it's interesting. They're not, they're not peaceful protests. Well, it's interesting because the world is actually very nuanced. And what I tried... Well, that wasn't nuanced. That well, was a, a huge mob of what people I tried to do attacking is, the U.S. campaign. Well, what I tried to do is I try to look at a, a broad spectrum of, of events, and I try to put things into a nuanced view, and I don't try and take a instant black or white point of view on things. Mm. And the fact that BLM were rioting and destroying the entire nation for months and during that exact week, and then some other people got together with an opposing political view and are facing serious prison time for doing less damage than BLM did. I find that kind of scary because- Well, under, people a, did die. Well, in a democratic nation, we should all be the same under the law. Yeah, Andrew, just to be clear, on January the 6th, people died. People died during BLM. I mean, there are certainly inconsistencies in the way groups of people have been policed. I think well, that's, the same, that's the same whether you're talking about the BLM marches to the uh, pro-Palestinian marches and so on, right? There's a lot of inconsistency. Well, then we agree. In, in, well, there's a lot of inconsistency in global policing, I think. I think that's a perfectly valid thing to say. But the idea that someone's got 20 years for being in a peaceful march is not true. The, the ones who've got the lengthy prison sentences have been held account for well, I'm not even, serious crimes. I'm not even condoning January 6th. I don't even know the ins and outs of January 6th. I mm. wasn't there. Mm. I'm not saying it should have happened. What I'm saying is exactly what you have said. There seems to be some massive inconsistencies in global policing now. So when you end up in a position where you're speaking against the system, as I do, and you understand that there are massive inconsistencies in policing globally, you start to sit down and seriously wonder if you stand a fair chance of a fair trial in any country on earth. I actually have to give massive credit to the Romanian judicial system because a judge one day sat down and said, why are these boys in jail and let us go? I don't know if I would have had a fair shot like that in many other nations. When you were released from jail after about three months, what was that feeling like? I, my, my brother and I were in the same cell at that time. We were extremely happy. I remember using the last of my mouthwash. During the day, I had some rituals to keep me sane, and I'd enjoy one swig of mouthwash a day. It's amazing how bored you get when you're staring at cockroaches, and even that sensation... So there were literally cockroaches in your cell? Correct. How many at any given time? At night, there was a lot of them. Like, what, dozens? Or? Yeah, a, a few. There was an infestation. We did our best to kill as many as we could. They kept us entertained but uh, they're annoying to sleep with. But mouthwash was something I enjoyed every day. The sensation of mouthwash made me happy and I remember using all of my mouthwash. And then instantly my brain started turning to all of the things I need to do. I'm a man, I have responsibilities. For 93 days I wasn't working. I started concerning myself with, okay, I'm about to get out of jail, thank God, I'm gonna leave. Who do I need to take care of? What's paid? Do I have any money left? Are bills due? Is mom okay? Are my children okay? And I just started thinking about work. And as soon as I got out, I didn't sleep for three days. I How many children do you have? I'm less confidential. Why? Because they, I have enemies, and unfortunately, I do not want to give them any information. But you have more than one. I have more than one, correct. Right. So, obviously, you're caring for your children. I understand that as a father, right? And obviously, and you have a partner? Yes. Are you married? No. I think I asked you last time and you were a bit cryptic about it. You're not married yet. No. You have a partner who's the mother of your children. Correct. The same woman is the mother of all your kids? It's confidential. It's a bit stupid to say confidential. Conf it, it is confidential, Pierce. It's confidential. I don't think you marry and have kids with it is confidential, surely. It is, for me. Really? Of course. I am a basically number one enemy of the state, Pierce. Look mm -hmm. what they've done to me. What have they put me in jail for? At the beginning of this garbage, people were sitting there thinking, maybe he's a human trafficker. It's been a year. Who? <laughs> show me a picture. Show me a video. Who's even a victim? There's nobody. The whole thing is made up. Well we're, going to come, well, we're going to come to what they say you've done, right? We're going to come to that. But I'm just curious. You come out of prison. You've got no ability to access any of your assets. How have you been functioning financially since then? I believe in prayer and I trust in God. Well, prayer I, doesn't pay the bills. And I do my very best. But prayer doesn't pay the bills. Unfortunately, absolutely everything I own was seized by the Romanian state. So I'm just going to have to survive and do my very best. Yeah, but how? I'm doing my very best, Pierce. Have you got wealthy benefactors helping you? I'm doing my very best. I wish I had wealthy benefactors. I wish I had people on my side. Yeah, but you can't function on, on no income at all. Seems you can. How? I'm doing my very best, Pierce. What does that mean? It means I'm doing my very best. Absolutely everything I own is, owned, is taken by the Romanian state. I don't have anything they don't have. How do you pay for food? I just have to do my best. What does that, what does that mean? <laughs> it means that I This is a great answer. <laughs> That is a great answer, y'all. 
Andrew is fucking funny, man. He is he is hilarious, man. Right. Well, God's not going to pay your bills. God has been paying my bills so far, it seems. Mm. It's amazing how far faith can take you. It's often when you have absolutely nothing left, people turn to faith. But you should turn to faith first. And you should believe in God when things are good. And that he will be there when times are bad. Initially, you were put on this sort of rolling 30-day house arrest. And they kept renewing that month by month by month. And then in June, uh, you and your brother and two others were formally charged with rape, trafficking, and forming an organized crime group to sexually exploit women and there were seven alleged victims named in the indictment you said at the time i look forward to being found innocent um you said earlier who are these women well there are seven named in the indictment yeah have you seen the videos of them on the internet saying we're not victims they made us be victims we told them well that will all presumably be analyzed in a trial do you know when the trial may be i have no idea it's so good do you believe it will happen i'm not sure it could get to a point where a judge any time before the trial decides his case is garbage and throws it away. If you ask me what I believe happened, it's very simple. They threw me in a jail cell knowing they had no case, knowing they had no victims, but they thought if they plaster me all over the MSM and they say that I'm a bad person and they call enough people, they will find the case they want. They couldn't find it. You name the date they charged me. They had six months to charge me. Usually the Romanian state, even the American embassy confirms to me charges within 30 days. With me, they used all six months trying to build a case and find actual victims of an actual crime. They couldn't. They charged me on the very last possible day they could unless they'd have to drop the entire case. And they charged me with garbage because they have nothing. There are no victims. I've done nothing wrong. And they've tried very hard. And we say something very pertinent to the, to the audience here. It's very difficult when you're thrown inside of a jail cell. You do not have access to social media. You do not have access to money. The entire MSM establishment are calling you a bad person. Hotlines are set up saying, if Andrew Tate's ever hurt you, you, call this hotline. You're a rich person where people may want to get money from you and exploit you and extract resource from you. And they're sitting here calling anyone you've ever known. They called my gardener's daughter, who I've never even spoken to, asking if I've ever done anything wrong to her or said anything wrong to her, trying to find victims of a crime that don't exist. It's actually a miracle from God that no one's come out trying to extract money from me. Whole thing is garbage. They could do this to anybody. Peers, they could do this to you. They could put you in a cell, put all over the media you're a sexual exploiter, and for three months talk about how bad you are when you can't defend yourself and call everyone you've ever interacted with. And if anybody you were ever rude to once decides they want a payday or some fame, they can use it against you. It's Oof, that is certainly a trying thing to go through and maintain composure through, honestly. And I remember he said the same thing to Pierce the first time uh, he interviewed him on his show in his studio. Damn, you can just really hear the passion coming off of him and almost anger from the whole situation. Mm, yeah, I'm really hoping... Nothing bad happens to these two guys because they're definitely a force for good in this world and all that other good stuff. But let's get back to it. Insane. The, the Romanian authorities prosecution files uh, accuse you of using verbal and physical abuse to keep women in line, taking uh, 50%, I believe, of the women's online income. Although I believe that figure could vary, could be up to 80%. Is that right? No, they accuse me of exploiting women who, may, who did TikTok the same women who say we were not exploited, he just told us how to do TikTok. Also, in the in prosecution file, if you want to talk about it, there's not a single bank transfer. There's not a single piece of evidence for any money. So I'm accused of making money from TikTok, but they haven't found any money. There's no money, and the victims are saying, I didn't exploit them to you do TikTok. What you, the whole thing is a joke. What is, I think, problematic for you is the war room, which was... A group Miscategorized of, and misunderstood. It was called the war room. Correct. Okay. And it had a lot of people who were dubbed the generals who ran the war room Correct. for you. And the war room had five to six hundred members who paid, I think, six thousand plus dollars to be a member of this. And when you saw the, the logs of the web chats between people from the war room to each other, a lot of it made disturbing reading. Were you disturbed by it when you read that? Firstly, a lot of that is bullshit. A lot of that's fake. Secondly, well, you think that literally those logs are fake? Absolutely. Secondly, but the BBC verified them. The BBC verified them. Are they the same people who verified the vaccine? Those people, they're liars. Firstly, a lot of them are fake. Secondly, the well, were you members... disturbed by anything you read? No, because none of it's real. Firstly, secondly, there's 4,000 members in the war room. Thirdly, the war room is about masculine personal development. We talk about fitness, making money, strength. We talk about very important things. I, there's 4,000 members inside. 
If you're telling me that amongst 4,000 members with 24 hour chat seven days a week for the last five years, they've managed to find two guys talking locker room talk and that somehow offends the world, then nobody understands how the world works. That's not why I was in jail. It's nothing to do with the war room. I was in jail because I spoke against power, because I told the truth about COVID, because I told the truth about the war in Ukraine, because I told the truth about all of these things. I don't understand why people would want to put you in jail for giving your opinions about COVID or Ukraine. Because why would they? Why wouldn't they? Well, but why would they? Why, because would they, say, the, why because would they say that Andrew Tate's opinion is... See, it's hard to tell if Pierce is being genuine or deliberately dense, or he might honestly not know. But... Um, the answer is because when you have a reach, influence, and popularity like someone like Andrew Tate, and you say the message he's saying, he has the ability to basically change or shift the direction the mind of the youth is going. And if you have the mind of the youth, you have the mind of the future. So if you have a whole generation of people practicing masculine excellence, right, getting to the height of your success as far as monetarily, physically, and um, uh, mentally, it's very hard to control those type of people because they have everything they could ever need. So, it's best to stop those type of people before they get too much power, too much momentum. Now, Andrew, he got way too much momentum, but he did, he did it quickly, which is why it was very hard like, to contain everything that was going on with him. So, yeah, that's basically it. I had another thing that was at the top of my head. I couldn't remember it, though. So important on Ukraine that we have to put him in jail. Because I, don't, I don't buy that. Okay, because I was the most Googled man on the planet, and I had a huge affinity with the most troublesome demographic for the Matrix, which is the young masculine youth, the people who you need to die in wars, the people who you need to sigh up into being slaves to build the roads while telling them that they're not allowed a point of view and they're not allowed an opinion on anything. And I was saying things which was going against the narrative. And the matrix, the way it operates is it uses the MSM to purport lies, to inject slave programming into people's brains so that we live lives which are not good for us but are good for them. And I was sitting there unplugging it. Why would they sit there and say, we've put together this massive psyop. We're going to convince everybody to inject themselves with poison and we're going to lock everyone in their houses and it's all a lie and we're going to let this one well, guy who everyone a, listens Andrew, to. Andrew, Andrew, it wasn't all a lie. Yes, it was. It wasn't. There was, a new, there was a new novel coronavirus. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what the facts were, and you can then laugh at them if you wish. Sure. But there was a novel coronavirus, yeah. COVID nineteen. It was killing thousands of people a day. Really? Yes, That's absolutely. Scary. Yeah, and as a, and I know people who died. Who I know doesn't? I know people who died before Corona. Of Fine. Illness. I'm sure people died of lots of things, but it was killing exponentially thousands and thousands of people. And then vaccines were developed at very high speed and they managed to save, in my estimation, millions of lives. You may not agree with that, Absolutely. but those are facts as assumed by the body of scientific and medical experts in the, the world. The body of scientific and medical mm. experts, you mean the matrix. I could get- What is the matrix? The matrix are a bunch of people who can come up with studies from the sky to say anything they want them to say, so they can use the MSM to purport garbage inside of people's minds. Mm. So you end up locked in your house, clapping for the NHS like a performing seal, injecting yourself with experimental poison for the mm. ninth time. It's a lie. There was no reason to lock everyone in their house. More people died from missed cancer appointments than anyone ever died of COVID. People always got the sniffles before COVID and they've always got it since. It wasn't Let me ask you a question. Hang on, sir. it wasn't. Where has COVID gone? It wasn't. Diseases don't go away. It wasn't. Where's COVID it gone? It wasn't. Well, the COVID strains have got milder, as indeed flu did. Flu oh, used to so kill. it's gone away. Well, flu pandemic in about 100 years ago killed 50 to 100 million people. And it's got steadily milder over the decades since. It's always very interesting to think about these diseases and stuff like that, right? Because <clears throat> when COVID was happening, my big question was, where's the flu? You know that one where we get like a shot every year? Well, not me. Maybe y'all. Not me. Maybe y'all. Maybe some of y'all. But where did the flu go during COVID season? Because I could have sworn for every year the flu was the big bad guy. But then COVID came along. And literally no one died of the flu? Hmm. Very weird. Very weird. This is normal medical science uh, pathway for most pandemics, right? So on that, I mean, your sort of cast iron, it was all matrix MSM nonsense is palpably untrue. Well, I'll tell you why that's not untrue. Let me tell you my personal experience with COVID. 
I'm an extremely logical person. At the beginning, when everyone was dying, dropping dead in the streets in China, which I never saw, by the way, funny, and the Italian hospitals were full, English hospitals were never full, funny. Me and my brother sat there and said, if this disease is so deadly and can damage us as strong military age males, then the world is over. So there's no point in hiding in our house. We decided to go to Sweden on day one of COVID. Day one, when everyone still believed, we went to Sweden. Why does no one talk about the fact that Sweden was open the entire time? Why does no one talk about the fact they didn't have masks or lockdown or vaccines? My brother and I partied in nightclubs seven days a week for three entire months while everyone in England was Sweden locked in their house. Had, Sweden actually had a number of restrictions. Not uh, when I was there. Not it as was open. Not as draconian as we had in the UK. And there are certainly legitimate questions to ask about the scale of our lockdowns. I think people panicked. They saw what was happening in in Italy, which had the second best medical healthcare system in the world, and people were dying in massive numbers and the hospitals were overrun. Um, so people may have panicked. Did you hear about the guy who died in a motorcycle crash and it was a COVID death? Did you hear about that one? Well, there was certain Downing people, Street didn't seem very concerned with there COVID. Was a long, were there was a long debate about people dying of COVID or with COVID. I know all that. But the bottom line for me, it is indisputable that COVID was a deadly pandemic that killed a lot of people. It turned out a lot of older people more than young people, but they didn't know that at the time, not for a long period. The vaccine saved millions of people's lives. There are legitimate questions about some of the boosters, about some of the side effects of the vaccines, as there are, by the way, with all vaccines. But the idea that COVID is some invention by the matrix to suppress and control its people is for the birds, Andrew. It's well, for the birds. It seems the birds and, and I, I don't are think, friends. I don't think a smart guy like you actually believes that. Of course I and that's absolutely one of my problems, believe that. One of my problems I have with you is that I think you are intelligent, but I think you also adopt positions that you know are going to get the, anti, you know, the anti-matrix mob inflamed. And it's just these all-encompassing views you have. COVID was a load of nonsense. Vaccines are all dangerous and killing more people than they Never say. Never said that. I no, said but, the COVID vaccine. Well, COVID vaccine, well, you don't think they worked? No, of course not, because the idea of, of course vaccine, they worked. The, the, the word vaccine in and of itself is that you get... They save millions of lives. If you get a vaccine, you do not get the disease. They changed the definition of vaccine in the dictionary so they could continue to inject us with this pointless poison. Mm. The, I had the vaccine for polio. I've never had polio. You got the vaccine for COVID and you're bragging online how you have COVID for the eighth time, but it's not that bad because you've had six injections. It's insane. And please understand my position. Please understand that I'm a person who doesn't believe any of these studies, don't believe any of this garbage, don't believe the matrix. I'm a person who was in Sweden for three months mm. as everyone was afraid, locked in their houses, partying at will. Sweden and had, it was perfectly fine. Sweden, they had a lower death rate than the UK. They had a much higher death rate than their neighboring countries in Scandinavia. Did you know that? They had a lower death rate you know than that? the UK. Did you know that? It doesn't, no, I didn't know that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, matter to you. Of course not. So you wouldn't compare them to their immediate neighbors. You'd only compare them to a country in the UK. If you think lockdowns worked, if you think lockdowns... I think lockdowns were only acceptable as an immediate uh, panic move, which it was, yeah, yeah. before there were vaccines. The yeah. moment they had a successful vaccine program that worked, yeah. then there was no justification for further lockdowns. You're a very important person, and you're very well respected. I'm not the, important, I'm oh, a journalist. No, you're very important, and you're very well respected yeah. within the UK, and you've been famous for a very long time. Were you invited to the party at Downing Street, or were you not in that circle? No. No? Oh, that's a shame. And I thought the because they seemed very concerned about COVID on the TV. And by the and way, they didn't thought, seem to give a shit. And soon I thought, as the TV was on. I thought that was disgraceful. And I thought Boris Johnson and the people working at Number Ten, who were having those parties, uh, when I had friends of mine who were literally saying goodbye to their mothers on FaceTime on their phone because they weren't allowed in to see them. I knew people in care homes where it ripped through and killed a third of the people in the home in two weeks. And the desperation that people felt. I had a cousin who lost his father who couldn't go and see uh, his dying wife and so on. There, there, there it's were, disgusting. There were terrible stories. It's criminal. Terrible stories. It's disgusting. So let me ask you a question as a professional, because we're both adults mm. and we're both very smart. As a professional, which is more likely that the government believed COVID was deadly and everybody should be truthfully afraid and locked in their houses, but because they had this spirit inside of them and they couldn't resist the idea of a party, decided to risk their lives to party, or they lied on the television trying to scare everyone and enslave them and lock them in their houses knowing it's garbage, knowing it's a lie and not caring and had a party behind everyone's backs they didn't think they'd get caught. Which one is more likely as a professional, as a logical human? Why don't we just agree that they were a bunch of rank hypocrites, stupid people, who were behaving utterly selfishly to the extent that the Queen, when her husband, Prince Philip, dies, is in the church on her own in a mask with none of her family around her after losing a rock of 70 years. And it turned out the night before, Downing Street had had, I think, two parties, including a karaoke party. I think that was shameful. 
and disgraceful. Well, I, so I we can would, agree on that, We right? can agree on that, and we can wake up and start to realize, oh, maybe the government doesn't care about us. Maybe the government lies to us. Maybe they tell us things and try and scare us, but they don't actually care themselves. Maybe all they are is hypocritical, self-interested people. Maybe they are. Maybe then, and maybe they use the MSM to purport their lies, to keep everybody enslaved while they do whatever they want, and that is the matrix in and of itself. And if you speak against it and people listen to you, I'll repeat this. Your ability to speak freely is directly correlated to your insignificance. If you're as big as I was, the most Googled man on the planet telling the truth, you will pay the price, Pierce. And that is why I was locked in that cell. And I do not regret it because I live true to God. I'm not going to sit here as a coward and not tell the truth to people for as long as I live until they put a bullet in my head. Let me ask you. Wow. Very wow. That was crazy. <clears throat> Very good. Very good. It's been a while since I've seen Andrew this fired up. But that brings us, or that finishes and closes out part one of Andrew Tate versus Pierce Morgan. Um, click on the next link for the next video. See y'all there.